Well, I'm going to get right to it, all right? Might be a little bit, a little bit heavy, a little bit weepy, but is that okay? Does everybody need a little bit of that? Well, sorry if you don't, but it's going to happen anyways. That's all I got. So, uh, but man, you could feel the Lord tugging on your heart. He was tugging on my heart pretty heavily. And uh, how many here need a refreshing? Just, uh, Lord, I need you to come and refresh. I mean, wake me up. How many need a, a good old-fashioned, wake me up, Lord? Lord, I need that. Lord, I'm crying out to you, Lord. I desire that. You know, uh, sometimes, I don't know about you, but it, here's how it, sometimes it works for me. Sometimes I can feel a little bit of distance from the Lord. I feel like, Lord, I feel separated from you. I feel like there's a barrier. I feel like there's a, there's a block between me and you. There's this distance, this, this barrier, this block. Sometimes I feel that way. And I say, oh, Lord, Lord, I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to be in that state of mind. I don't know if it's just me or if somebody else may be in that state of mind or in that position right now today. Where it's just, Lord, it's not like it used to be with you. Where I was just, me and you were buddy buddies. We were tight. It's not like that. I just, there's something, something separating us. Some type of distance here. Well, sometimes I feel it. Sometimes I feel that. How many here know when the Lord, Lord's Spirit may leave? How many here know? Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't. And I'll, the real, I'm going to go over these couple scriptures right here, not to say that this is what's happening to any one person, but I want it to prick your heart and see if there's a longing in there. Found in Judges 16.20. Samson talking here, Delilah, and she said, you guys know the story, I won't, we won't go over the background. And this is Delilah saying, and she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he woke up out of his sleep and said, I will go out as other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. You mean I can get myself into a position, into a state of mind, into a place where I don't even know if the Lord has left me? God's Spirit has left me? Man, they just sung about how the Lord was always going to be there with me. The Lord is always going to be there with you. What I'm wanting to know is, does that make you question your heart right now? Say, oh Lord, you know, where am I with you? Do I know this next scripture Found in Psalms 51, 11, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Does that, when, you, when anybody else reads that, does that hurt? Like, oh, dear Lord. Oh, dear Lord. Out of everything in the world, you could take away, but do not take away thy free spirit. There could be that time where God could depart from me. And I, Lord, I want to know. I want to know in my heart. And do you know that there's a reason why you guys, all of us, we exist? You know there's a reason why you exist. It's, it's a special, awesome, wonderful reason. Found in Matthew 5.13. The scripture you all know, heard before, you are the salt of the earth. How many here know that you are the salt of the earth? You're a disciple of Jesus. You're the salt of the earth. Say it. Say it out loud. I'm the salt of the earth. That's how special you are. You're preserving this earth. You are those ones. You are that special. You. God has said that you are that salt. You're the only reason why this earth still exists. You. Preserving it. It's you. But you know the rest of the scripture, right? But if salt 
has lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot. You know what the word savor means? To become insipid. How do you know what insipid means? I looked it up too. I didn't really know. But Lord, this is me right here. Lord, I'm insipid. Lord, I'm lacking vigor. I'm lacking interest. I've become insipid in my walk with the Lord. I've become insipid. I've lost that savor that salt has lost. Maybe I have. Maybe I haven't. Maybe it's just for me. But Lord, help me, oh God. Help me draw closer to you this day. How many here want to draw closer to him today? How many here want to break through that barrier and that wall and that whatever it is that distance is, that 100-yard gap, that mile-long gap, you want to close that gap up today? Do you want to leave the same? Lord, I come to church every day and I still have that gap. I still have that separation. And I go through Monday and Tuesday and that gap and that separation is still there. And I'm trying to reach out to you. But I just, man, I can't really connect with you. And then, you know what? I just give up on it. I give up on praying. I give up on reading the Bible. I give up on doing all those things because, man, I'm just, I'm tired and I'm done. I give up on those things. But can I close the gap today? How many is going to close the gap today? Amen. I'm going to close the gap today. Amen. Wherever it is you may be, whoever it may be, Lord, if it's just for me, Lord, I want to close the gap today. I don't want to be that way anymore. I want to be in your arms. I don't want to be cast away, trodden underfoot. There's actually a salt that uh, uh, in some part of the country uh, there in the Middle East that actually it's good for nothing. So what they do is they actually cast it out and throw it in the roadways as uh, like we would use gravel. It's, like, it's just, that's all it is. How many here want to be trodden under, underfoot? How many like the enjoy that feeling? I don't, I don't like and enjoy that feeling. Lord, I want to be close and right next to you this day. And I was thinking, Lord, Lord, how do I get back? Where did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong in this gap and this separation from you? And maybe it's just me, Lord. You're standing there the whole time. You're right there. You're right there. It's not like you've left and, and gone yonder. You're right there. But I just have this block and this barrier that I put up in front of you. Lord, what did, what did happen? What did I do? Right in Romans 8, 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. In Galatians 5.16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. How many here have ever got a war raging on inside of them? I got, oh, I, you know, I should be doing this, but man, I, I need to be doing this, but... Lord, I want to be doing this. I need to be drawing close to you. But you know what? I just, I got this other member of my body that's worn against me. It's pulling me over here. And I'm being led of the flesh. And that is just drawing and separating me from you. Lord, I don't want to be led of the flesh today. How many here want to be influenced by God's spirit this day? Amen. Lord, I want you to influence my life. I want you to lead me in my life. Lord, I got so many plans and so many ideas and so many things I want to get done in this fleshly, worldly life, but there's only one thing that matters, and that is him and being with him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I think, oh, yeah, that's great, Gary, but I need a little more. It's simple as that. Lord, I need to be with you. You do not take that free spirit from me. That is so valuable to me. I need it more than anything. 
You think, well, maybe I don't really need it more than anything. Oh, dear Lord, if the devil is whispering that to you in some way or some form, some fashion, that you do not need the Spirit of the Lord, that you do not need it, it's, oh, man, you, it's because we've gotten so accustomed to it. We've, and we've experienced so many times. That is a lie of the devil trying to pull you away from him. That's why, that's another good reason why pastor wants us, man, right here in church so much. He wants you right in here all together because I need God's spirit and God's spirit is prevalent in God's house. Yeah, it's at my house. It's in my closet of prayer. It's while I'm driving in the car, but it is thick and he has come to meet you on a Sunday right here. No matter if it's at 1 p.m. or 6 p.m., it doesn't matter when we gather together. Do I still value it? You know, I talked a little bit about the value of our walk with God and God and being with the Lord on Wednesday. And I feel like I'm still on that path a little bit in some form or fashion. And I don't know why the Lord is stirring that in my heart. It's so important. Don't lose sight of it. Don't let your flesh lead and guide you. Don't let that influence you on your path, on your path over here for work and for uh, your just ambitions in life. Don't let that lead you because all of a sudden you start getting separation. Separation. And the Lord says, hey, 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 where are you going? Uh, Lord, I'm pursuing my other path over here. I'm, I'm getting tired of this. I've, you know why? I've quit believing I quit believing. I quit believing on how valuable and important the Spirit of the Lord is. It is so precious. So precious, Lord, take not thy free spirit from me. So I was uh, preparing all this, and uh, the Lord reminded me of what happened to me this week. Thursday, Friday, can't remember. And anybody that knows me real well knows that this is pretty typical Garrett. And Garrett has got to make a change, all right? I've got to change my habits, change my ways. Brother Tim will know exactly what I'm talking about here. And my dad is going to say, well, son, I told you, you know? So um, how many here know when uh, you're driving in your car and the little light comes on that says, check tire pressure? How many here actually check tire pressure? <laughs> I never do, okay? <laughs> See? And that is the problem. They never work. I, you know what? I just got out of the tire shop, and the light comes on. I thought, see, the, it's just Honda. They make a faulty sensor. I don't have to check it. I don't have to check it. You know, I go on day one, nothing happens. Day two, nothing happens. Day three, week one, week two, week three, nothing happens. It's just a dumb sensor, right? They're just all faulty. They haven't worked out the kinks and the bugs and system, whatever, right? And... If, if my job, I drive a lot, I told you that before, I drive a lot, I burn through tires like, like Tic Tacs. I just go through them. Seriously. I don't know why. Brother Tim doesn't know why. He's like, how do you can be burn through so many tires? We do the same kind of work. So I don't know. I don't know where I'm driving. <laughs> and uh, so, lo and behold, I've ignored all the warnings. I've ignored them all. Dear Lord, help me, right? driving down I-25 at 80 miles an hour. And all of a sudden, boy, there's a lot of shake in this steering wheel right here. I can't hang on to this thing no more. Oh, man, you know what? That tire finally, finally gave up. And here we go, pull over, right? Now, I don't know how many has changed a tire on the side of an interstate highway before, but now keep in mind, as I told you, I go through tires all the time. So I've changed a tire. I've changed every tire in my car four or five times. That little donut, I've, I probably should change out that donut that I got in my car. That's how many, so many miles I got on that donut. But here I am on the side of I-25 heading down to Pueblo. No, can't make it to the rest stop, so I'm right on the shoulder. Man, I'm in my little Honda Civic, man, the smallest car out there. Right, you know, go ahead and I'll turn on my flashers, you know, make sure everybody knows I'm here, out there changing the tire. Eight, out there, and <laughs> I'm out there changing the tire, got the jack up, all right, I can do this done in 10 minutes, get back to, <laughs> back, back to my job. Jack that thing up, big old semi, mm, comes on down the road. 
I'm telling you what, any minute now I'm thinking I'm going to die. Any minute. He comes down the road and all of a sudden the car goes, the whole car shaking like this, right? Falls right off the jack. I'm like, oh, no, off the jack. You know, rotor sitting on the ground in the dirt. You know, I got to dig the weeds out of it now. Now I got to jack it up. Now I got, my, I got my extension ladder out, propping up the car, trying to prop that in there, then to get the jack underneath there. And it took me, yeah, 45 minutes or so, and I was done. I was spent. I was like, all right, I ain't, I ain't even going to my next job. I'm already, already late. And then, uh, you know, there's always a lesson to be learned, a lesson to be learned. And I was, as I was preparing this, Lord said, are you heeding to the warnings? How many warnings do I need to give you? I gave you one. You ignored it. You didn't believe it. My pastor got up here and gave me a warning, gave me a word, gave me a, a direction. Did I heed that one warning? Did I believe that one warning? Oh, it went on twice. It went on for weeks. Nothing happened. Nothing changed. The warning didn't mean nothing. But I'm here to tell you, one day you're going to end up on the side of I-25 with a flat. I must needs heed the warning and fall back into my first love with God this day. You think, oh, I could just go on another day and not have him be my first love? Yes, you can. And it'd probably be just like yesterday. Nothing much will change. But Lord, let me heed the warning. Right now, today, let me heed the warning on my dashboard to go fix my tire. I must. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many here want to heed that warning? How many, Lord, all right, I'll do it. Lord, I'm in. I accept it. All right, I cave. You got my attention now. You finally got my attention. And Lord, maybe it takes me getting on the side of I-25 while cars are just rolling by as fast as they can. No one pulls over. No one pulls over into the left lane of a stopped vehicle, right? I don't even do it sometimes. Like, hey, why'd that guy stop right there? <laughs> you know, my, um, I'm probably already buying by the time I see him. And it's, oh, it's life-threatening being on the side of the road like that. This is life-threatening. My soul hangs in the balance this day. My soul, it, it's that important. Take not that free spirit from me. It's that valuable. It's that precious. It's that special to me. Let me heed every warning, O oh God, and every, every direction, O oh God, and every word, O oh Lord. Let me cleave unto it. And let me follow after it. Any... In closing here, in Hebrews 11, 9, by faith, praise the Lord's by faith. By faith, he sojourned, being Abraham, in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise, for he looked for a city with which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. You know, they sang it, sang about it during that song one accord saying, Ladies and gentlemen, this is not our home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many here, if you can close your eyes for just a second, and can actually picture living in heaven? Just the moment you picture yourself, I'm up there and I'm in heaven right where I want to be, right there with Jesus, standing right beside him. Can I still, can I still picture myself there? Or has this world made such an impact and such an influence on me that, you know what, it's hard for me to separate from it and go to my real home up there in heaven. That's my real home. That's where I'm headed. How many's, how many's headed there? How many's going there? How many's going to do whatever they can to get there to be with the Lord forever? Amen. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, I'm going to get there. I'm going to go. I'm going to fight for it. Because I got to. 
And if, Lord, I started to, uh, last night I was, I was praying and I was trying to picture myself there. And you know what was sad? And I sat there and I, I weeped. And it took me a minute or two to picture myself there. I thought, I'll just be straight out honest with you. It took me a second, Lord. Lord, it took me a minute to picture, to envision in my mind, to paint a picture in my mind of the one thing that I want out of life. It took me that long? A minute? Two minutes? Or is it, maybe it was for you, as soon as you closed your eyes and you could see, you could see heaven, whatever picture you can paint in your mind of what you think heaven is and you see the streets of gold and you see the mansions and you see the Lord you see the white throne you see all those things and it was just right there in your eyes and you could feel it you were there Lord if I have lost that in any way if there is some separation that keeps me from envisioning that what is most valuable to me what is most important where my home actually is can I still picture home is a way to say it. Can you picture your home? Can you picture living at your home? Lord, I got to get back to that place. I got to get back to that renewal with you, to that longing and that relationship with you. To where I close my eyes and I can see my heavenly Father right there. Praise the Lord. That's where I want to get today. Right now, Lord. Right now, we open up this altar. Oh, Lord, I want to get there right now. Lord, I know maybe you still got some things to do on this earth, but Lord, let me close my eyes and let me see. You know, it said, by faith, Abraham sojourned to that promised land. By faith, you're going to sojourn. By faith. Don't let your faith dwindle. Don't let it fall to the right, to the left, as they sang again in that song. Don't look to the right nor to the left. Move forward in the faith. And you're going to travel from this worldly home into your permanent home. By faith, you're going to make it there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Shall we stand?